Welcome to session three of English 104A Research Writing. Before this, in session one, we've begun to research and we have created an outline. In session two, we have continued our research and have created a first rough draft. So this week, we're going to be assessing what we found, um, starting to look at organization for how we put this paper together and looking at transitions. So the topic outcomes for this particular session are to define the difference between truth and bias. That is our discussion board. We next want to clarify the differences between different types of writing. And finally, we're going to be looking at things like integrating pathos, logos, and ethos into writing. Part of what we're doing this week is looking at the bigger picture. One element that I'd like for each person to consider as we go through each of these sort of diagnostic stages of writing is to realize that this isn't just about how you are writing this paper. When we look at these different topics and ideas, these are things that other writers are incorporating. So when you look at a paper, at an article, at a blog, and you realize that you, in this session, are working hard to have an organization, to have flow, to have purpose in what you're writing, so too are all of the writers you are reading. One idea to practice as you look at clarifying those differences between the different types of writing is to go in and look at one of your articles and to highlight different elements. Where's the thesis? What is that thesis? Is it fully supported? What sort of pattern of organization has this author used? Did it work? Did it help you go from point A to point B? Do you feel that you have learned? Do you feel that the conclusion is apt? These are the same questions the authors of all of these articles and journals have faced and that you are facing now in each of these sessions. So look for the repetition of patterns and the repetition of ideas. One of the elements that we're going to be looking at in our course shell is a CCU provided PDF or PowerPoint. It covers different elements of persuasion. Um, so I want you to look at this and consider how we go about sharing different ideas. I like to think about persuasion as part of what I write um, in terms of a pie chart. Um, I'm not writing simply to persuade. I want to share information. I want to discuss. I want to explore. But no matter what I'm doing, I'm probably going to have a certain science, a certain idea. I'm not sharing information just to share it. Although that could be something like a technical manual. Those are just so that we can put furniture together or different items like that. But most of the time, we do have some sort of bias, some sort of idea that is at the root of why we are choosing to share. So look at these different ideas and do the same thing I suggested a moment ago. Look at the works you are reading and see if you can find them. See if you can figure out what sort of emotional appeals are being shared, what sort of reasoning is being pursued, um, what sort of credibility the authors have. The reading assignments are big this unit. So we have our um, CCU sort of PowerPoint PDF, we have our workbook, and then we also have an article to share and explore. And this article is what you're going to base your question response to for the discussion threads. So our big question here is, is there such a thing as truth in research? Notice that it says to give an example. This is one of the most important elements in anything that you write. Um, when we're having a conversation and someone is puzzled, they can pause and say, well, could you explain that? Could you help me? You may notice the expression on their face, and that will help you know that you need another example. But when we're writing, we miss all of that. So we have to think about that in advance. We have to think about the questions people would have and try to address them as quickly as possible. We're looking at statistics in this particular session. How are statistics, which we often deem as truth, designed to lend credibility? One of the things I'm already pointing out to some of you is that we need clarity in our statistics. Um, we're not looking at saying that statistics are always true or always false. Rather, we're looking to be as clear and as focused as possible in how we present our research and how we assess the research that we read. So one of the examples that I have for you with that is to look at what country the statistic is for. So you may find a wonderful article that covers the topic you are looking at, but it may address that topic in a different country than your own. 
That doesn't mean that it isn't a good statistic. It doesn't mean that it isn't correct. What we need to say, is that statistic worldwide? Is that statistic for my particular location or their particular location? And how does that engage with the larger picture? How does that help um, my ideas or help their ideas? How does it hurt those ideas? What exactly is in that statistic? So we're not negating them. We simply want to be as clear and aware as possible when we are reading and sharing. The other aspects we're looking at here are how does bias affect truth and how does it affect research? So remember the idea about persuasion. It's often part of what we do. I am persuaded that writing and teaching are about communication and that that's what I'm sharing in all of the courses that I teach. Am I right? How do I go about exploring that when I teach and when I share? So those elements are within pretty much everything we do. And we are going to hopefully by the end of this be stronger and more confident in how we approach those topics. Draft two. So some of the questions I've had for the outline and that will now be going into our first draft are, well, if you don't get my responses and my comments back to me really quickly, how do I incorporate those? So remember, this is a conversation. I'm going to point out ideas and differences. I've had wonderful conversations with a number of you already where you said, well, you said this, but I was thinking that. That's part of the process. That's what we're looking at. You don't have to look at each edit that I've made and say, oh, well, I absolutely have to do that right now just because. Um, that's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for you to say, why? Why did you ask this? What does that mean? Is my point clear? Is she understanding that? Does she see what I want her to see when I am writing this and when I'm sharing these statistics? That's what the conversation is about. So look at them, try to incorporate them. If you have a reason for not sharing them, let me know. Share that with me, explore that. If you like what I've done, go ahead and incorporate it. Um, but otherwise, remember, it's a conversation. So some of the elements we're gonna focus on now are adding depth to our introduction and conclusion and defining our transitions. Um, first of all, if you're having any trouble with resources because you are adding some more, you wanna have a total of five by the time we're done, reach out to me so that I can support you. Um, when it comes to introductions and conclusions, these are things that as a writer, I tend to leave until last. I try to have a working thesis. It is not my final thesis until all of the research is in, until my first or even second draft is fully available. It's going to keep being refined. I'm going to keep um, altering, editing, adding, subtracting, doing all of those different elements. So as I write, I have that working thesis and working introduction. Um, when I feel that I'm ready, I read through my full body paragraphs. And then I go back and rewrite and add to and really deepen my introduction. Then I pause and I read over the entire element again. I start with my introduction and I go through the body paragraphs and then I write my conclusion. So these are steps that we tend to take. So while you are encouraged to start working on ideas for your introduction and conclusion, please don't think of them as final quite yet. Please don't think of your thesis as absolutely final. It's something that needs to be refined as you go through this. So for the next part, transitions, I have an entire slide because I want you to think about how we move through what we are sharing. In the next slide, I have some references and I'm giving you some references to the Purdue OWL. They describe transitions as bridges and that is a great way to consider them. We have to move between points, but we need indicators. We don't drive somewhere without seeing the road signs. We don't um, move through a recipe without looking at step one, step two, step three. We need those elements. So think about how each paragraph is going to lead to another paragraph. So that last sentence may very well lead you to the next topic. Also think about how each paragraph stems from the previous paragraph. None of these are living in isolation and they need to be connected. So here are some examples, things like again, equally important, first, second, third, um, still, of course, immediately. So look at some of those different ideas. They can be just a word. Um, transitions can also be a full sentence. Um, depending on the size and scope of what you're sharing, they're going to increase or decrease, um, depending on what you need. But start thinking about how 
we use paragraphs, we use punctuation, and now we're going to use words to let people know where we're going, where we have started, where we're ending, um, and how we're moving between different elements. So here are some references, both things that are in our course shell that are under your reading assignments and viewing assignments, but also some extra elements you will find as we go through the course that I'm going to consistently encourage you to explore the Purdue OWL. It is a well-maintained site that covers lots of different ideas, not just APA formatting, but also transitions and writing styles in general and how to craft papers, how to craft um, references, and also how to craft items like resumes and letters of interest. So it's a great website for life <laughs> as you go through communicating. So I hope this gets you started for session three, and I hope that you will be ready and excited to engage in that process of writing. These are not, this is still not a final draft. This is one among many, and we're going to keep refining and conversing and discussing until we get a strong, clear, clear, clarified idea as we go through it. So have a great week.